Well, hello again. Uh, did Elizabeth I do a good job? Well, I guess everybody knows uh, Elizabeth was the daughter of Henry VIII by his second wife, Anne Boleyn. She ruled from uh, 1558 to 1603, a reign known as the Golden Age. She's known as the Virgin Queen Gloriana, Good Queen Bess. But did she do a good job? Okay, let's, let's look at the different views. Those that say, yes, she did, well, they've got a pretty long list. Well, let's just begin with the Spanish Armada. Its defeat was arguably the most important event in English history, right right up there with the Norman Conquest. Uh, a loss would have made England Catholic, uh, like the rest, most of the rest of Europe. It would have not been a naval superpower. There would have been no empire to speak of. Even the English language and its subsequent uh, impact on history might have become a, it might have become a minor regional dialect. <laughs> uh, her personal leadership in that was a major factor in the victory. But uh, it must be admitted she also benefited from incredibly good luck. Uh, Good luck is something that's nice to have. If the Duke of Parma's invasion force had had safely crossed the the sea, the channel, from Flanders, the survival of Elizabeth's government in Protestant England would have looked doubtful. Uh, Almost certainly the Queen and her ministers would have been captured or killed. Uh, But she was lucky. That's a characteristic of no small importance. It was bad luck, bad tactics, and bad weather that defeated the Spanish Armada rather than the great uh, martial skills of, uh, of the English Navy and, and uh, the ships sent against the Armada. Only six Spanish ships were actually destroyed as a result of combat. Fifty Armada ships were lost through accident during the Atlantic storms that scattered the fleet. Uh, More than 13,000 sailors and soldiers uh, did not come home to Spain. The vast majority victims not of English cannon fire, but of bad luck and incompetent management. So let's put all that into that sort of perspective. But the Elizabethan age saw a great national vigor with the maritime exploits of Hawkins, Drake, Raleigh. Uh, It and she were enriched by their piracy and the seeds of England's command of the seas were sown. Uh, She also promoted the arts. Uh, Shakespeare, Marlowe, Spencer applied their trade with her patronage and encouragement. And then following the Mary Queen of Scots flight to England and her imprisonment, Elizabeth uh, became a target of successive conspiracies by English Catholics. She was uh, faced with this sort of thing through much of her reign. Uh, She then ordered Mary's execution, uh, reluctantly apparently, Uh, but then in response to papal excommunication, which seems a bit superfluous since she wasn't a Catholic Catholic any longer, she approved anti-Catholic legislation and renewed royal supremacy over the church. She thus pretty much defused the threat from dissident Catholics. Uh, She also encouraged literacy in England. Uh, More people were being educated than ever before. Levels of literacy greatly improved thanks to some free schools, uh, relatively cheap grammar schools in most towns. Uh, We have uh, several here in Canterbury still. And the increased availability of printed reading matter and teaching tools. Uh, She was really serious about it. Well, that's a pretty good list. Uh, but what about that say, those that say, no, she did not do a good job? Well, I guess we have to look at Ireland. Uh, the long and brutal Tudor conquest of Ireland reached its conclusion with the Nine Years' War. Admittedly, she felt she had no choice. Ireland could have been a staging post for invasion of England by the Catholic forces of Europe. She certainly had to pay attention to that risk. Uh, but the oppression, unfortunately, that uh, was required to diffuse their ability, it, it led to a self-perpetuating cycle of violence and rebellion. Uh, Oliver Cromwell uh, used uh, the destruction of dissident forces and their expulsion from uh, ancestral lands to his advantage. Uh, the legacy of that still pl- plagues Anglo-Irish relations. 
She failed to sort out the financial mess created by her father. There, there were a few, of course, who did very well during Elizabeth's reign, but these men tended to stifle any change of fiscal reform because they did so well out of it, uh, the system as it stood. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> uh, those who suffered from the financial problems of Elizabeth's reign were the poor. During her reign, the price of food went up by something like 75%, but there was a drastic fall in the wages of agricultural laborers during the same period. There was a lot of hunger, even some starvation. That, that's a real failure. Well, what's my take on Elizabeth? Uh, did she do a good job? Well, I would say that she was tough and smart. Uh, she was a natural leader. She's justly remembered for her famous speech at Tilbury to the fleet departing to confront the Armada. I know I have the body, but of a weak, feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and a king of England too, and think foul scorn that Parma or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm. Well, that's leadership. Uh, she cleverly set about creating a glorious public image that overwhelmed religious differences uh, and appealed directly to English patriotism. Uh, she did that to win her subjects over. Uh, she needed to be visible. So every summer, for the first 20 years of her reign, she was moving in splendid procession through the major towns and cities of England. The centerpiece, of course, was the queen herself. But uh, it was image burnishing of the first order, and she was good at it. Of course, uh, she made a few mistakes, but I unequivocally say she did a good job. Better than any of her successors, I'm afraid to say. Well, I hope you liked that. If you did, please do the usual. Give me a like, a subscribe, uh, uh, notify, uh, comment, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.